Hi folks, welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Lauren Real, and we've got a great show for you today. We'll be talking with uh, uh, Oh, sorry. Oh my goodness. Well, that happens sometimes. First things first, uh, I have Ryan Martin here with me today. He is a magician, and uh, those cards just came out of nowhere, so it looks like we're going to be in for some magic today, right folks? Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank Thanks you so for much coming for on, Ryan. This is a lot of fun. A Wait, second it's time. It's a lot of fun. Second time. Yes. And as promised, I certainly hope that I know Justin got to see some magic last time, but now it's my turn, right? Mm -hmm. Time to see some magic. And uh, I just want to tell all you guys at home that we're not going to be cutting away at all during this segment, so you'll be able to see everything that's going on right here just like I do. So I'll be just as surprised as you. Yes. These are all different, as you can see, every single mm -hmm. one. But even face down, you have a free choice of any one. So, oh, so I get out, to pick a card, huh? Yes. Make sure all that right. the viewer sees it, not me. I'll look away. That make one sure looks you, good. You guys got it? See what it is? Okay, I'm not looking. Yep, I got okay. it. Is it good? Got it, just good. Just put it back anywhere, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, that's a good spot right on the bottom. I, I was <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I, I shouldn't actually, have made, made it easy for you. <laughs> no, 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 that's good. I'm going to take it from right here, look. <laughs> Sound effect's important. Okay. Of course, got to have right it. Right there, there it is, three of hearts. Can the camera see that, is that it? Not quite. Really? Not quite. <laughs> no, 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 I said you got to see it, look, look. Yes? <laughs> how did you do that? that? Really oh no, I, was, I thought I maybe I stumped you. No, that's pretty far out. I don't know how that's... But that was it. Just to make it better, see this is uh, too obvious. Maybe if you were to say stop at one, it doesn't uh -huh. matter, anytime. Stop. Okay, and if you could sign your name, I have a pen. Oh, right I sure there. will. Yeah, right across that, right there, just initials. All right, Lauren Real, right there. Make sure that's dry. Nice and dry. Yes, and then also if you could sign, um, I don't know, just... Um, Initials on the other side. Sure. Right, now, and, well, we'll put this over here just for now. And sign the next one, too. And then put, like, some symbol, whatever, whatever works. Put a heart. There we go. All there set. we go. This is a really bizarre thing about the Four of Diamonds. It doesn't matter what card you have or what card you sign. It's connected to you, right? Exactly. It loves you, right? It <laughs> all the time because it's even got the heart. So watch carefully. As you take the four, this is so bizarre. Look. Like this. In the deck. Say mm -hmm. stop. Stop. Right there. Look. One card turns face up. And with it's your my name. card. And this is even better. Look, if you put your my initials in the and deck, the heart. Just touch a new one. Doesn't matter. Right now, if this one is literally the one, seven of clubs with her name on it, I'm gonna square them back to back just so you can see. I don't believe it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> it is. Both cards my back to back. Hold your hand sides. like this. Put your other hand on top. Now this hand press down, this hand press up. Look, here's where the coffee comes into play. You just, just that heat. Yeah. Causes it's something. Happen. Do you feel that? Yeah, it's I felt start, a little starting something. to get warm. Lift your hand up. Look, look. It's one card. It's. Look. It's all fused together. Look at that. Do you feel that? Is that one? One card. It's one. I actually, I do have uh. something else. That, I, oh that I'd love to give you just as like a, a present. Here, we'll set these down. Right well, I, I would love a present. Okay, I have something else keeping. I can't say no to that. No, you can't. But it was inside my wallet, and it has both your names on it on oh, each side. Oh, and it's my card. Seven and four. So this is my souvenir from yes, this very exciting magic show, isn't it? Well, thank you. Oh, my gosh. I'm blown away, and you guys probably are at home. I have no idea how this happened, and it's a mystery, huh? <laughs> So let's, let's talk really quick about, you know, if folks at home want to see more of you, mm -hmm. where, where can they catch you performing weekly? Weekly, I'm at Mexicali Rose every Thursday, and you can, you can see me from uh, 6 to 8, mm -hmm. um, usually performing. And I'm going up to tables while you wait for food. And the best part is if you mention you came to see Magic, you get 10% off. 10%. Well, that's bill. fantastic. Yes. Now, what about maybe booking you for a private event, a wedding? I'm sure this would be great at birthday parties. I do all those. All you do all those. those. So birthdays, weddings, any kind of company event that you want to have, incredible entertainment. I sort of like to create the show just special for the event. Absolutely. Yeah. And then also, you have performed at Sprecher's. I know that was a mm -hmm. wonderful show. Will you be back there again soon, too? I will. I'll be back there the 26th, uh -huh. right? That is the 26th from... Coming up real soon. Yeah, 5.30 to 8.30. Come see some magic. Yeah. 
Well, Sunday the 26th. Be People got lots of options. And um, last but not least, I sure hope that we see you on Talk of the Town again shortly, huh? Yes, sometime in the near future. Sometime sure. in the I'm near so future. Excited about well, that. thank you. Ryan Martin of Ryan Martin Magic. Go check him out. He stumped me, and I'm sure he's going to stump you guys too. So we'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. With me now is Dr. Megan Piper from the UW Center for Tobacco Research. Thank you for coming on today. It's great to see you here. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Wonderful. Well, I know today we're going to be talking about a study that you guys have coming up. And for all the folks at home, there's also going to be an opportunity for you to get involved too. So make sure you listen up for that. Now, can we talk a little bit um, just to give a background on what this study that you're doing is all about? Sure. So this is a study that's being sponsored jointly with the Food and Drug Administration and mm -hmm. the National Cancer Institute. And what we're trying to do is to provide some important information to the FDA so that they can regulate electronic cigarettes. Okay, so this isn't just uh, tobacco use, it's vaping too. Exactly. So we know that electronic cigarettes have become incredibly popular mm -hmm, with adults absolutely. also with um, adolescents, unfortunately. Uh, but we don't really know about the long-term effects. Yeah, because they're so new on the market, so we're all a little bit in the dark on that, and you're trying to shed some light on it, huh? Exactly. So what, what do you hope to learn from this study? Uh, so a couple things. Mm -hmm. First, we're going to uh, we're going to be recruiting some people who are only smokers, mm -hmm. 200 of those, and then 200 people that we consider dual users, so people who smoke and vape or use e-cigarettes. Okay, absolutely. And what we want to do first off is just sort of see over two years what happens. Do people um, who are vaping and smoking stop vaping, stop mm -hmm. smoking, or do both? Oh, interesting. So you're going to see if they transition from one to the other, back, and then are you going to be measuring kind of effects on the body too? Exactly. Exactly. So we're going to be looking at two main kind of health effects. Mm -hmm. We're going to be looking at lung health. So lung function, does vaping, um, along with smoking, if you're smoking less, does that improve your lung health? Sure. Um, but we're also going to be looking at exposure to cancer-causing agents. Mm -hmm. So how many carcinogens are in the body if you are a smoker versus a dual user versus maybe someone who's gotten to the point where they're just using electronic cigarettes. So you're going to be looking at a lot of different factors. That's yes. great. You're going to get a lot of valuable information here. <clears throat> That's our hope. So I know you said you're going to have two main participant groups. Um, now, if folks at home maybe think that this might be a study they could get involved in, who, who should be volunteering for this study? So we're looking for adult smokers um, who are smoking every day and then either who do use e-cigarettes or vape mm -hmm. or don't. And uh, if they're interested in participating, then they can go ahead and contact us at our mytobaccouse.com website. Um, they can leave their information on our secure website, and our staff will get back and see if the study is right for them. Well, perfect. That's, that's a great way to get involved. And then I just want to clarify something real quick for our viewers, too. So this is not a study involved with quitting, correct? This is not, you don't have to be on the path to quitting. <clears throat> Absolutely. This is a study for anybody who's smoking okay. and or vaping. You don't have to be interested in quitting at all to participate. Okay, good. So everybody can get involved. That's, that's great. So are there any incentives, maybe, for a volunteer that might get involved with you in this research project? Sure. So we're asking for a two-year commitment, mm -hmm. and because of that, we're going to be uh, compensating participants up to $800 for their oh, participation. Oh, wow. That's great. But we also want to encourage people to know that there's a sense of pride in being involved in providing the data that the oh, FDA yeah. needs to establish regulatory functions over the electronic cigarette. Oh, that's very, very true. And I think that that's hugely important, the fact that they're backing your study. You know, that, I commend you on that. That's wonderful. And um, I'm glad that maybe people can get involved and do something that's going to provide so much valuable information and, and insight into this relatively new and fresh topic. And I'm sure we're all curious about it because, you know, vaping, it sometimes seems kind of like a quick, um, a quick fix mm -hmm. to um, maybe being a tobacco user but we don't know too much about it. So let's figure out, is this a quick fix? What's this doing for us compared to cigarettes? Things like that. So I know I'm definitely intrigued to, intrigued to see the results. So, um, how can, so how can folks sign up? I know we'd mentioned your website. Is mm -hmm. that the best way to do it? Yep, the best way is to just get on mytobaccouse.com mm -hmm. and fill out the form, and then we'll get back in touch with people. Perfect, and it's starting next week, right? Yep. So they'll be back in touch <coughs> with you shortly if, if they yep. send their information over. The website's ready to go, so if they're interested, they can so just contact us. You're ready and waiting for Absolutely. some participants. That's fantastic. And last but not least, um, like I said, uh, e-cigs, vaping, it's really new to the market. Is it, is, do you think it's really safer than cigarettes, or what's, what's the take on that? Oh, that's the question. That right? is the question. That is the million-dollar question. Right now, we know that 
um, compared to combustible cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So when you smoke a regular cigarette, you burn tobacco. Mm -hmm. You burn tobacco, you create about 7,000 chemicals, and we know that almost 70 of those cause cancer. Sure. So when you come to an electronic cigarette and you're vaping, we know that that's only got five to 10 chemicals in it. Um, and so obviously safer than a known Certainly. 70 carcinogens. But the problem is, is e-cigarette liquid or juice, it's unregulated. Exactly. And research and shows new. it doesn't even necessarily have as much nicotine as you think it has based on the right. label because the manufacturing processes are completely unregulated. There's still a lot more to learn, isn't there? <clears throat> exactly. <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Megan Piper from UW Center for Tobacco Research. Make sure you check out their website and find out how you can get involved. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. Joining me now is one of our news partners, Vicki McCarthy from the Madison Community Montessori School. How are you today? Great, thanks for having me. Absolutely, great to have you on again. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about Montessori in the home. Right. So I know for you guys, you start doing um, schooling for kids 12 months and older, correct? Right. So if a family maybe wants to start implementing that Montessori philosophy really early on, what can they do in their own home to implement that? Right. Well, when a, when a baby first comes home, it's mm -hmm. a time of transition for everybody, for the baby, for the family. Even if it isn't the first baby, it's always a time of transition. So those first six weeks, six, eight weeks are really, really an important time Very crucial, for definitely. family to do bonding mm -hmm. and um, for the home environment really to be as calm and peaceful as possible. I know. I'm sure you want to do anything you can to smooth that transition right. and make it easy for the family, right. easy for the newborn. Easy for sleep, if that's at all possible. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is the goal, right? That is, that is the, the hope. <laughs> so if you're setting up a nursery for your newborn or you know your baby you just brought home, what sort of things should a new parent keep in mind to bring into that nursery? You know, I think less is more. Mm -hmm. There are so many things out there available for babies, mm -hmm. and there are only so few yeah, things that important? are really needed. Yeah, what's What should be included? So you need a physical changing mm -hmm. area where you're going to be able to change the baby's diapers and the baby's mm -hmm. clothes, and everything should be in arm's reach because when the baby's that little, you don't want to oh, walk away from yeah. the baby. Not even for a second. Not even for a moment. Mm -hmm. So that's the first area you want to establish. And the second area would be a feeding area. So maybe a comfortable chair for mom and to do nursing or feeding in the baby's room um, with a step stool or something in a little table for her personal yeah, items nearby. something to make that very comfortable. Right, because there's a lot of time spent feeding a baby. Oh, I bet. Mm -hmm. I bet. It's definitely mm -hmm. a full-time job. Right. So, second area you'd mentioned was for feeding. What's right. the third area? I bet there needs to be a place for the baby to sleep. Right. And so when a baby is very little, oftentimes families will use a bassinet mm -hmm. or a basket such as this for a baby to sleep in when, um, when they first come home from the hospital. And then oftentimes when a baby's maybe two or three months old and a little bit older for the basket, um, maybe a little bit too big for the basket, yeah. oftentimes families move into a crib. And if you're trying to do Montessori in a home environment, I would encourage you to try putting the mattress actually right on the floor oh, really? and not using the crib at all. Okay. Um, and that is just yeah, to really increase the baby's um, independence to allow so want, the baby to they're move. They're encouraging to kind of explore right. outside of the right. mattress and see right. what's going on in the room. Right. And I bet that's kind of to enhance their curiosity and help right. them build that. Right, to pique that interest and to really allow that baby the freedom of movement. Oh, absolutely. That's a really unique idea. I'd mm -hmm. never heard of that before. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Saves a little bit of money, too. Well, hey, right. there you go. Another, <laughs> another perk of that, huh? So let's talk a little more. Is there, is there a fourth area is. for the setting up a nursery? The fourth area, yes, is called a movement area. Mm -hmm. So you'll want to have like um, a foam mat on the floor or maybe just a thick blanket, something to protect the baby's head. And if you hang um, like a door mirror horizontally near that mat, then the baby can maybe spend some time awake um, on its tummy in sure. front of the mirror. And that mirror gives the baby a lot of feedback about its movements and the world around him. Oh. So it's a really great place to um, have the baby while it's awake. This is just one of my personal questions. At what age do babies start to kind of notice that that's them back in the mirror yeah, and know they've been getting that months. feedback? Yeah, okay. not for a few months. That's very fun. And I noticed you brought quite a few items with you today. So right. can you talk to us a little bit about those? Yes. So when a baby is really little, and I'm thinking around two or three months mm -hmm. of age, um, you're trying to develop it three different senses, the visual sense, the tactile sense, and the auditory sense. So when you use something like a mobile, so I'm going to just show one here. This is a mobile that we often use in a Montessori environment, and um, the idea is that it's really simple. Mm -hmm. There are only three or five elements hanging from a mobile. That's sure. about all that the baby needs in terms of stimulation. 
and you hang a mobile about 10 or 12 inches above the baby's chest, not directly above the baby's face. And that'll really help um, the baby learn to do some visual tracking. You know, and I think there, there's so many out there that have a lot of bells and whistles mm -hmm. and just, they can maybe almost be overwhelming to right. a baby, but this right. looks like a really simple, peaceful, Right. toy to just kind of get them started and right. start having them engage with the world. Absolutely. So absolutely. I noticed you brought a couple other things. Are there right. any other toys you might recommend for a newborn? Yes, absolutely. So for tactile, um, this is a, a you know ball with protrusions. It's Certainly. very easy for the baby to hold on to this. Lots of places for them to grab. Mm -hmm. and, and as they get older, this is a great gumming. <laughs> teething tool, yes, gumming te tool. Teething tool. Um, this is called a grasping beads. It's an easy one to make at home. These are just wooden beads on a leather strap. Again, lightweight, easy for the baby to hold on to. And these are very simple too, or maybe yeah. even something you could craft in your own home for right. your newborn. Absolutely. And lastly, just an auditory, um, some rattles. This is a, wood, a gourd, so it's just a dried gourd. Yeah. It's very simple, very lightweight. And then the silver rattle. I like that. You keep it very simple and right. easy and clean. Absolutely. I love it. Well, it was wonderful talking to you today. Thanks. We look forward to having you on next time. Stay tuned for more Talk of the Town. We'll be talking about a great program going on right here in our community. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. With me now is Amy Good, the president of Angel's Wish, an animal welfare group that I'm very passionate about. I'm very excited to have you on today. Angel's Wish has always been one of my favorite groups to see out in the community, and now I get to meet you, and we get to tell more to all the viewers at home, so this is great to have you on. Thank you. Great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's start off and talk about what makes Angel's Wish such a unique animal welfare group. Great. Well, you know, we are one of the largest in the um, area, but most mm -hmm. people actually haven't heard of us. Um, we're still kind of a well-known secret, yeah, but absolutely. Um, we're all volunteer group. Mm -hmm. All the animals stay in our foster homes until they find their forever homes. So people actually meet our animals only on weekends, mm -hmm. either at our main Verona Pet Adoption and Resource Center or over at PetSmart East on Sundays. So this is definitely a secret that we need to get out in the open because this, this is great and I think that provides mm -hmm. the animals such a nice loving home. They're not, in a, they're not in another place during the week. They're mm -hmm. in homes, they're interacting and have somewhere comfortable to stay. Right, absolutely. It's very nice. So PetSmart and then at your main center in Verona. Correct. correct. Wonderful. So what else do you guys do um, other than cat and kitten adoptions? I know I've seen all the kittens mm -hmm. at PetSmart, but I know there's more. Right. Well, we definitely specialize in cats and mm -hmm. kittens because they have the overwhelming need right now Absolutely. for homes. But um, at our adoption center in Verona, we also offer cat nail trims. So oh, for people wow. that have cats and need a little extra hand trimming nails, we'll do that. We offer microchipping. So if an animal is lost or stolen, it helps re reunite them with their owner. Oh, and then yeah. we also um, offer other assistance that people might need if they have questions. Uh, that we can help answer on behaviors mm -hmm. and then we also actually offer a retail store and it's all oh. items that we've tested our foster homes have used them and it's everything from good foods to fun toys or behavioral products as well so it's the best of the best and I think that's great because you are like all around a resource center for anybody mm -hmm. who either has a cat already is in the process of adopting one right. maybe you're starting to think about it you can help them every step of the way that's very nice even with offering nail trims mm -hmm. and a selection of your favorite products and the ones that you know will work the best and I think even for the cats that get adopted that's probably really beneficial if uh, maybe folks are using the same products that the cats used in the homes prior to adoption. Right it makes the transition easier as far as foods go or if they had a favorite toy in their foster mm -hmm. home they can have that at their new home so it just helps everything oh, go great, well, better. Great. So you said it's uh, largely volunteer based then mm -hmm. so what, are, what is your greatest need right now in the volunteering department? Certainly foster homes. Mm -hmm. um, because we are all foster home based and volunteer based, we really can only help the number of animals that we have homes to care for our animals in. And so all sorts of people foster. Um, we have people that are families. Mm -hmm. We have retired people. We have people that have their own animals. We mm -hmm. have people that don't have any animals. Anyone who's willing to open their home and right. have another guest for a while. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. So can you tell us just a little more about being a foster parent for Angel's Wish? Sure. So Angel's Wish takes care of all the medical mm -hmm. um, needs that the animal might have get them all ready for adoption as far as that goes and then really it's up to the volunteer foster home to just kind of provide that day-to-day -day love and attention help socialize them and because their animals stay in foster homes they might get used to other animals mm -hmm. you know some cats have never seen a dog before well in their foster home they might get that experience kind of opens up their world yeah, a little bit so absolutely. that's your job to be the nurturing caretaker and then mm -hmm. angels wish takes care of the vet expenses mm -hmm. and those those other 
things as well. Right. So that makes it pretty easy and I think accessible for everyone. Like you said, whether you have a home, whether you have other pets, whether you're retired, mm -hmm. everybody can, you know, invite another kitten into their home if they're if they're open to doing that. So also, I've heard you guys specialize in feline matchmaking. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Well, we really like to specialize in that because, you know, again, because we do mostly cats mm -hmm. and kittens, um, but just because we can know them very well in our foster homes, when families come in to adopt from us, we can make a really good match between cat and family. So we oh, ask perfect. them about the current animals in their household mm -hmm. and try to match personalities if they have another cat, for example. Absolutely. Um, if they have a really geriatric cat, we're not going to say, oh, yeah, take an eight-week old kitten not a good match but we try to do things like that that make it a, hopefully a lifelong match for that family. I think family. that's great and yeah like we were talking about before the camera started rolling sometimes you've got an older cat if you mm -hmm. have a brand new kitten bounding around that might not be such a good match or but maybe if you've got a really playful puppy or something that's gonna it's gonna be a good fit. Sure. So can we just uh, really quick before we've got to go tell sure. me how Angel's Wish got its name. Oh, well, one of our founding members had um, found a kitten at a construction mm -hmm. site, and she took it home, and unfortunately it was so dehydrated, so ill, um, it just could not be saved, and it actually died in Lois's arms. Oh my gosh. And she had named the kitten Angel. So oh. we say that Angel's wish is that no, lo no other animal is lost or abandoned or neglected. So we oh. try to care for everybody and find yeah. them a forever home. That just gave me chills. That's oh. such a great story, and hopefully Angel's wish is coming true because of you and all the other volunteers. So thank you very much for everything you do, and thank you for joining us today, Amy. Thank you. Make sure yeah, you check out Angel's Wish, and if you're looking to get involved, this will be a great way for you to be a foster parent for a new kitten. Thank you so much for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you next time.